What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. Happy October. And today I've got a story time for y'all that was sent in by a subscriber about arguably the worst teacher performance on the first day of school of all time. Not that I'm usually rating teachers' performances like an Oscar rating system, but you know, regardless, this one's definitely up there as probably the worst way to approach it. I figured it would be a uh, pretty entertaining story for y'all, though. That's what we're going to be doing today. But before we get into it, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam whatsoever. You're going to end up with a teacher like this. Trust me, you don't want that. So, uh, yeah, press the like button. And without further ado, let's go. All right, so as you guys know, if you've ever been to school before, the first day of school is usually pretty chill. You know, you might have to do a name game, introduce yourself. If you have a teacher that really sucks, you might have to do a worksheet. But for all intensive purposes, it's supposed to be a pretty calm, collected day. Some teachers, though, I feel like take it as a day to make sure that everyone knows they're going to be in charge with an iron fist, right? Like, instead of trying to get the kids in your class on your side by being nice the first day of school, Sometimes teachers just be like, all right, if I'm really mean at first, that means they'll respect me more. It usually has the opposite effect, but hey, whatever. Anyways, the subscriber that sent this in was stuck with a teacher that was probably like a 45-year-old man who was pretty hell-bent on uh, earning respect the being mean way. I don't know if he had ever tried the other approach of like being super cool on the first day of school, explaining to the kids that, you know, they don't really need to be afraid of him, they'll have a good year. Probably just always jump straight to trying to scare everyone into listening to him. But here's the thing, here's the truth about this. No matter what your approach is, right? I just feel like no one's really gonna like you if you're going full throttle trying to be as mean and pos as possible on the first impression. You know, everyone always says first impressions make are like a big deal, you have to worry about how people meet you for the first time, but I feel like teachers never really consider that about students meeting them. Especially this guy, dude. 45 years of life and at no point did he realize, huh, when I meet someone and they start screaming at me, telling me that I have to listen to rules, it doesn't exactly make me want to be sitting in their classroom. Regardless, that's his plan anyways. You know, no better way to earn respect than the proven way that doesn't earn it. Anyways, the class gets in, they all sit down, and immediately, as soon as the bell rings, he gets up there and he writes his name on the board, and he turns around all dramatically after writing his name on the board, and he wrote it very sassily. And he says, Hello, my name is Mr. Blunderpants, that's not his real name, and this is going to be the worst class you've ever taken. And as he's saying it, he turns back to the board and writes, worst class ever underneath it. Which, listen man, really is not the best first impression you could possibly do. Whatever, I guess I could understand how a teacher could think that putting down their fist early would like make kids respect them more. I can understand that mistake, I've had teachers do that. But I really don't understand why you would want to lean into the fact that most of the kids that hate take your class absolutely hate it. That's not something that I think you'd want to be proud of. Like, if enough kids that have taken your class have told you it's the worst class ever, where you lean into it and start just telling kids on the first day of school that your class sucks, you probably need to revisit your teaching skills, dude. Ah, yes, every kid that takes my class has at least three mental breakdowns, cries, and I've had to fight eight parents physically because of how mean I was to their children. Welcome to the worst class ever. This is like Disney villain school here, but like, not a good Disney villain. This is like the son of a real Disney villain. He still ended up as a teacher, but he wants to be evil and make his dad proud type of vibe. Anyways, after that, obviously everybody's a little bit on edge, not really sure what's gonna happen next, and he starts starts ranting about the way that he wants to run his classroom and he's doing the usual strict teacher stuff that they say I run a no-nonsense classroom here. I promise you that any tomfoolery or goofing around needs to be left at the door before you walk into this classroom. This classroom is not a place for fun. It is a place for learning. If you students do not understand that, we are not going to get along. Do you understand? This class is going to be the hardest thing any of you have ever done. I know a lot of you guys have coasted through school not really trying, but in this class, that's not going to be possible. It's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done, but also the most rewarding thing you've ever done. 
Anytime somebody starts talking like that, bro, I immediately know that it's just gonna suck. Because, like, here's the thing. If something's really, really difficult, but it actually is rewarding, like when people do it, they feel fulfilled, it really makes them proud, you don't have to explain that. You know what I mean? That's just something that people would feel after. The fact that this guy is talking about how hard his class is and how much it sucks, but they're gonna really like it when they're done, usually goes to show me that people don't usually really like it when they're done. Also, most hard things aren't super fun, dude. Like, don't get it twisted. I understand people get fulfillment from hard work. Like, I'm sure digging a ditch when you're done, you're like, holy crap, I just dug that. But the action of digging the ditch still sucks. Like, it's not like everyone's having a super great time trying to do things that are awful. If you're a teacher and you're telling me that you're gonna give me eight hours of homework a night, no, I'm just not gonna have fun doing it. Even if you think I'll feel really fulfilled when I'm 37, I'm not gonna like it in the moment. Anyways, this guy's still going off about the class rules and how everyone needs to listen to him because he's a teacher and it's his job to shape their future and there's no nonsense allowed. And in the middle of his rant, a kid who, you know, isn't a troublemaker by any means, just a normal dude, raises his hand and says, Excuse me, sir, can I go to the bathroom? I'm really sorry, I have to go. Now, he had raised his hand, but he didn't wait to get called on. He had just kind of said it out loud, probably because he really had to go to the bathroom. You know, you're not really worried about etiquette in that situation. But I guess the teacher obviously takes it as very, very disrespectful that this kid would have the nerve to interrupt him. What, you think that just because you have to go to the bathroom that you can interrupt my speech? How dare you? So he decides that he's going to make an example out of this kid. Now is the chance to show everyone the type of teacher that they're dealing with. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Kids wanting to go to the bathroom, that's too far. We can't be allowing that in our school system. That's what's wrong with America. Keep in mind this is not during the devious lick thing. Any Anyways, the teacher looks at this kid who just asked to go to the bathroom and starts saying that he has no right to interrupt an adult when they're talking for any reason, regardless of whether or not it's going to the bathroom. You think that you can interrupt a teacher speaking? That just goes to show me that you're a disrespectful kid. Just starts tearing into him for being extremely rude and interrupting him to ask to go to the bathroom. And here's what I don't understand. Yes, I'm sure it's technically rude to interrupt someone. But is it not equally rude to, like, scream at somebody saying that they suck for just needing to, like, go to the bathroom? I don't, I don't really know what they want him to do about it. Anyways, I think the teacher thought that if he went on this rant about how kids shouldn't interrupt him to go to the bathroom or whatever, that it was going to make him look really tough, you know? Like, every kid was going to be like, whoa, I don't want to mess with this guy. But every kid in the class starts to kind of be like, dude, you should let him go to the bathroom. It has the opposite effect. He just starts to look nuts, and all of the kids are kind of like, all right, if this guy's going to not letting people go to the bathroom, that sucks. Even then, dude, I just feel like that's one of those things that teachers shouldn't really be allowed to say no to unless there's a very good reason. Like, obviously, everybody has been in a situation where there's one kid in your class who goes to the bathroom every day for 30 minutes. You know, I can understand why the teacher would say no in that particular situation, but if it's the first day of school and somebody just says they have to go to the bathroom, I don't understand why you would want to say no or should be allowed to do it. Like, if you have no reason to think this kid is pulling your leg and just going to the bathroom to waste time, I don't understand on what planet you would want to say no, even if you're trying to teach him a lesson. And of course, he starts to go off about how beyond just being disrespectful to teachers, it's rude to interrupt your elders, you should never interrupt anyone older than you, you know, people that are older love to say that as if it magically just makes everything cool. Regardless, the kid at that point looks at the teacher again and says, Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I respect my elders. I just really, really have to go to the bathroom. So can I please go? And the teacher once again is like, Do not interrupt me just for that. No, you can't go to the bathroom until the end of class. And he continues to go on this speech, no longer just to this kid, but to the rest of class, about how that's an example of how kids are so disrespectful these days, and he can't believe how disrespectful people have gotten over the last few years as he's been a teacher. And he hopes that this shows an example to them of what they can expect from the school year, blah, 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 which, trust me, this is not a good example of what you want to expect in the school year. As I said, first days of schools are supposed to be super chill, dude. I should just be, like, saying my name, introducing myself. I shouldn't be having to witness World War III as you get insanely mad at someone for having to, like, use the bathroom. If this is what every day in class is gonna be like, this has gotta be one of the worst classes of all time. I mean, really think about it, dude. If he's saying that this is an example of how he's gonna run his classroom, it just means that he's going to be screaming at someone for something stupid literally every day? 
Yeah, that does not exactly sound like a class where I'm going to be learning a whole bunch. I might be learning a bunch about how weird teachers can be, but that's about it. First day of school. You know, I understand teachers getting pissed and screaming out of class if the class has been bad for months. All of us get that. But the first day, man? Anyways, as I said, the teacher kind of just continues his rant about how awful his class is going to be, how much he sucks to work with. And the kid who has to pee at this point, I guess, has just had enough. He'd been sitting there respectfully. He gets up, walks over to the corner. And the layout of the class is they had kind of windows. And by the windows, he had a bunch of plants. And the kid says, no one look. And sure enough, no one looked, but he starts peeing on the plant. And they know he is because they can hear it. And also, the teacher starts screaming, Oh my god, are you peeing on the plants? And of course, all the kids start laughing because, like... I, what are the odds of this situation happening? And the teacher keeps screaming at him, what are you doing, what are you doing, because the kid hasn't responded yet. And the kid looks at the teacher and says, I told you I had to go, you wouldn't let me go, this is your fault, and then just keeps going, dude. And, you know, all things considered, dude had to go. So he finishes his business, obviously, and the teacher is just red, screaming at him. Do you feel like that was appropriate? You have no idea how much trouble I'm about to get you in, blah, 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 blah. He calls the dean, says that they need to come down immediately and handle this issue. Well, anyways, the administration is obviously on their way down. It takes a little bit. So while it's going, the kid and the teacher are arguing back and forth. And he's telling the teacher, like, I'm not going to get in trouble because you wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. Like, I'm not going to do it. I'm simply not going to get in trouble. Watch. And the teacher is arguing with him, saying that he's going to ensure that he gets expelled because, you know, it's just inappropriate for someone to behave that way. You can't be peeing in class, blah, 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 which all in all has got to be one of the funniest conversations people have heard go down in a classroom dude like I've heard teachers argue about some weird stuff but imagine you're sitting there first day of school by the way and your teacher and a kid are arguing about peeing in class and whether or not it's like a moral thing to do dude obviously this is abnormal as hell anyways the deans get down there they come in they start trying to figure out what's going on but obviously it's just kind of a screaming fest you have kids yelling you've got the teacher yelling the the, the kid who's in trouble yelling so they decide to separate everybody the dean takes everyone out and starts talking to everyone well, sure enough, you know, they're hearing a little bit of arguing in the hallway, but the arguing slows down pretty quick, and it sounds like the teacher, if anything, comes down a lot, like, calms down a lot. Like, ooh, his anger was on an 11, now he's on level 4. So, people are thinking that, you know, the teacher either really got his way or it's not going the way he expected. Those are the only two options. They come back in... And the kid just has this big smile on his face, like like he won, you know? And he sits down, the dean says thank you, the teacher is red, looks pissed, goes back to the board and just continues to explain the syllabus of the class. Well, the rest of the class is really awkward, it's silent, obviously class leaves, they all walk out. And as soon as they're out of earshot of the teacher, the kid starts to tell everybody what happened. Well, they had gotten out in the hallway, the dean had asked everyone to explain what happened, blah 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 blah. Well, the kid starts to explain that while this guy was introducing the class, he had to go to the restroom, and he had asked to use the restroom. The teacher had said no. He had asked again to use the restroom, and the teacher said no. He had asked again, and he said no, so the kid had to go. He wasn't going to pee his pants, so he peed in the plant. And obviously, the dean gave him a lecture about how, you know, you can't do that, you know, if it was any other circumstances, you would be expelled, blah, 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 blah. Gave him a month of lunch detention, because obviously... You just can't let that happen. Like, you have to punish them a little bit in that scenario, you know. But apparently tore into the teacher. He didn't yell at all because he knew the class would be listening, but was telling the teacher that he has no right to, like, prevent people from doing that. And if this happens again, it's going to be a serious problem. And the teacher just looked like an idiot because, you know, believe it or not, it's probably easier to yell at a teacher to let kids use the restroom than it is to deal with, like, a lawsuit if kids continue to have to, like, pee in plants in their class. Still not really too sure what the teacher expected. Like, if someone's asking to go to the bathroom repeatedly saying they really have to go and you say no and it causes an accident like this, it's kind of on you. I bet you he'll never say no again, though. I bet you that taught him his lesson real quick. I guarantee you this will never occur again. I can almost guarantee it. And all in all, a month of lunch detention for somehow getting away with peeing in a classroom is impressive. That guy is probably a legend at that school, dude. It's like uh, like, like an urban legend, you know, when kids gather around the campfire and tell ghost stories. They're like, let me tell you the story of the man who won the battle with the teacher. 
Regardless, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. And, of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on those notifications. If you are a fan of story times, you should subscribe because I post every single day. Other than that, though, if you want to help me out, a link to the intro song can be found down below in the description, along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast. Other than that, if you're a big fan of G Fuel, the best energy drink for gamers by gamers, if you use code SCRUBBY at the checkout, it gets you a discount, so be sure to do that. And uh, yeah, last but certainly not least, it's October, Halloween's coming up, and we got the new Halloween merch to go along with it. As you can tell, it's up on your screen right now, and it may be the coolest merch to ever exist. A link to it will be in the description, but be sure to go get yourself the Halloween merch. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that's actually gonna do it for the video. Don't get anyone pregnant if you do, make sure they're hot, and hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys tomorrow with another video. Longer videos coming up. See, this one was longer. I, I got you guys. Don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got a story time that was sent in by a subscriber about these teachers that ended up getting in a fist fight on field day. You know, definitely not what you expect on field day. It's supposed to be a day of fun. And it's especially wild because we all know teachers love to talk about how mature they are. Regardless, I figured it would be a pretty fun video for uh, you guys to listen to and me to make. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam. I'm going to have to fight you in a boxing match like Logan Paul. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So at this school, I guess the way their field day was organized is that each class was basically its own team. And throughout the day, you kind of competed against other teams or other classes to like beat each other. And on these teams, the teachers were the team captain. You know, they probably didn't want kids to like feel left out or whatever. So by making teachers the team captain, they felt like everyone would be happier, magic time, you know, everyone's a winner or whatever. And uh, most of the teachers were pretty chill about it considering it was an elementary school, you know, like, Obviously, the field day for eight-year-olds is very chill. You're not supposed to be going hard. It doesn't matter if you win. And most of the teachers were aware of the fact that it was, like, more for the kids to have fun. But as always, there was a couple dudes that were just way too competitive for no reason. The type of kids that, like, will fist fight you over P.E. basketball, except grown-ups. This kid's class was taught by this dude named Mr. Drew. That's what we're gonna call him for this video. And he was a super, super competitive guy. Like, a little bit too competitive. He would like race kids to the water fountain and truck them out of the way at the last second if they were beating him just to beat them. All day whenever they would lose any of the games on field day he would get like insanely upset and start screaming at his class and be like you guys suck. At one point, a kid lost the game and he told him that he would rather him just go home because he sucks too bad. Like, this is a teacher on field day just taking it that seriously. And it's elementary school kids too, bro. Like, at least in a high school PE class, high school field day, that makes a little more sense. It's still stupid. But like, dude, why are you screaming at an eight-year-old that he sucks at the beanbag race? It's just not that deep. You really don't need to be doing that. But, you know, it wasn't even like he was the only teacher taking it way too seriously. There was another teacher at the school named Mr. Kenny who was also just like a crazy super competitive dude and one of the games that they had set up for this field day for everybody to play and like go against each other on was a basketball game called knockout for those of you that don't know what knockout is basically like you get in a line and then you shoot the basketball the person behind you tries to shoot it if they make it before you make it then you're out it's basically like elimination basketball I guess it's like Fortnite basketball oh my god battle royale anyways um it's, it's really not that intense of a game. It doesn't have to be. Obviously, sometimes people take it a little bit too far, but it's just not that deep. But by fate, you know, Mr. Kenny and Mr. Drew end up having to play each other for the last game of field day in knockout. Obviously, because they were super competitive, they had been doing well all day because when nobody else is trying, you kind of win by default when you put in any effort. So, like, I guess it was the finals, and whichever team won this game of knockout was going to be 
crowned the champion of field day, you know, like, oh, obviously a very big deal, bro. If, if you don't get crowned the champion of field day, you're, you're gonna actually explode. Like, it's just not that deep. They're treating it like there's literally life and death on the line. And the kids honestly didn't care too much. They just start kind of playing knockout and the teachers are like screaming, running full speed, you know, trying to like sabotage the people behind them so they don't make the shot too quickly. And most of the kids just don't care and very quickly get out because when you're not really caring, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a fun game unless you're into it. So obviously with the teachers screaming and running full speed and also just being like three times as tall as everybody else, they're doing incredibly well. They're still in. And there's one other kid who's also still playing. So there's three people left in the game that was supposed to be for the kids. It's the two grown men screaming at each other, you know, trying to cheat basically. And everybody's just watching them. And I don't know if they realized that they were silly but were too into it or like if they in their heads thought they looked really cool. But everybody was just kind of watching the same way you would watch like a grown man in a Chuck E. Cheese play place. It's just kind of weird. Anyways, the teachers were not as good at this basketball as this kid was. This kid could shoot. And on one of these, when it was uh, Mr. Drew shooting, Shooting, he shoots and he misses and Mr. Kenny was behind him and he shot and he missed but on the rebound Mr. Drew decided to punch the ball away like from the court and if you've ever punched a basketball or like played knockout before it's not against the rules to hit somebody's ball but it's just kind of like a douche move you're just not supposed to do it because then the person has to like run all the way over there pick up their ball get back and like they probably would have beat you if you didn't decide to punch the basketball so you're just not supposed to do it obviously both of these guys are just way too into it though so he ends up punching the other teacher's basketball to like get him away so he has time to make the shot well the other teacher responds by not chasing his ball but waiting for his ball like the other ball you know what i'm saying he takes the other ball and throws it the other way so they've both now taken each other's basketballs and thrown them in the opposite direction of everything else and at that point, basketball is no longer their focus, bro. They get up in each other's faces and start, like, screaming at each other. Trash talking, but, like, weird old people trash talk. Bro, I'll bite your nipple, bro. Like, it just it's stuff that was just kind of weirdly non-threatening, you know? Like, for some reason, people used to trash talk like that. And, uh, it's just as quickly as it became intense, it starts to become a shove match. And to try to, like, de-escalate the situation without drawing much attention to it, a couple of other teachers had gone and gotten their basketballs and kind of, like, brought it back to try to calm it down, but now it's a shoving match. But as the teachers bring the basketballs back up, they kind of like stop a little bit. They kind of take a step away from each other and are kind of calming down. But then the kid that's behind them shoots again and he misses. And at that point, bro, it was almost like a, you ever seen like a dog just need to hunt something? It was like they just got reminded of the fact that they were in a game, bro. Suddenly they're like, oh my God, we're still playing. And Mr. Drew goes to get his ball and like, like, shoot and Mr. Kenny picks up the basketball and just hurls it at the back of his head so yeah well Mr. Drew did punch the ball first okay Mr. Kenny did definitely escalate it because he decided to chuck a basketball at the other teacher's head and as soon as the basketball smacks the back of Mr. Drew's head he turns around and it's on bro UFC 57 in progress Hadouken Street Fighter Mortal Kombat, bro, it is on. Honestly, like, as much as I would love to say that it was probably a really intense street fight, it was more like four punches of them going back and forth, and then, like, the awkward wrestling thing that people that don't really know how to fight do. However, what was awesome is apparently all the kids were screaming like it was a UFC fight, because it was, like, the last game of field day for the championship. Literally the entire school had been gathered around them to, like, you know, watch it. So when they started fighting, fighting everybody is like freaking out screaming the subscriber that sent this in distinctly remembers somebody screaming kill him like a little kid screaming kill him which makes it even better bro if i ever get in a fight i would prefer to have like a coliseum like effect you know people just shouting at it obviously it was not that intense of a fight but anytime teachers are fighting in front of you you're gonna be freaking out about it anyways it gets broken up after that a couple of teachers go out and separate them and obviously at that point they're like feel days over everybody has to get sent back to class the day was almost over anyways but you know everyone's kind of upset because instead of like getting to just hang out on the field they have to go sit in class for another 30 minutes before everything ends the teachers, though, here's the wildest part of all of this. I was like, okay, uh, obviously the teachers had to have gotten fired for this. You can't have a boxing match like Logan Paul and KSI in front of, like, a bunch of students and not lose your job. 
Somehow, though, apparently, the teachers managed to, like, hang on to their job and, and kept teaching, dude. That must have been wild. Like, coming into class on Monday and having to look the kids in the eye after you just, like, almost killed someone in front of them. Obviously, you know, he didn't almost kill him. But to the kids, bro, the kids were like, kill him! I, I don't know how they managed to negotiate that, dude. Like, that's beyond me. Sorry for giving another grown man a purple nurple in front of everybody. I will say, though, one thing is that the kids definitely got a good story time out of it like let's be honest here it's not every day that you're just chilling during field day and your teachers start throwing hands all of that for a field day championship bro i don't even remember who won my field day through any of them any of them that i ever had so you know way to go you fought everybody in front of everyone for an award literally so meaningless that no one's ever gonna remember it dude if you're ever sitting next to somebody and they start talking about how their highlight of their life is when they won their uh, elementary school field day that's how you know you need delete but anyways guys i think that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did i would really appreciate you taking a quick second to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought if you don't know what to comment go ahead and comment water bottle down below we'll go with that one today if you haven't already subscribed and turned on notifications, you should do that. I post really often and you never want to miss another video. I also went ahead and put some of the old story times on Spotify. So if you guys want to listen to those offline, uh, go ahead, head over to there. I'll put a link in the description. And other than that, you should also check out the merch. 2 million subscriber merch, link down below. And last but certainly not least, you should also use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout for a bit of a discount. Helps you out, helps me out, everyone's a winner. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot and hopefully i'll see you guys next time i'm out peace what's going on guys it's your boy scrub here back again with another video hope you guys are having a great day i know i am and today i've got a story time for y'all that was actually sent in by a subscriber about how uh his teacher ended up roasting a kid so hard in class that he ended up crying yeah, you know, that's the way the ball bounces sometimes. That's why you gotta be careful what teachers you start getting into it worth. Regardless, I figured it would be a pretty funny video you guys are gonna enjoy. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam. You're gonna get hit, and let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so as we've talked about on this channel a few times, bro, I don't know what it is about certain kids that go to school and think that everybody just wants to, like, hear them interrupting everyone and saying stupid stuff, but for some reason, there seems to be a lot of these kids, dude. And there was this kid that we're gonna call Brandon for the purpose of the story, and he was the type of kid that just, like, always was screaming stuff to try to make people laugh, dude. You know, the teacher would be reading a book, and he'd be like, the or organisms and Brandon would be like orgasm ah, ha, 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 sick you know that type of stuff and obviously there's a time and place where that's funny I don't think that anyone would deny that like bro a class clown in your class that makes good jokes is a good time but when the person who's trying to be the class clown is just wandering around just like yelling random stuff it doesn't exactly make anyone laugh but him you know and he was convinced that he was hilarious like usually when someone's kind of annoying or they're not making people laugh after the first couple jokes don't land and everybody just kind of turns and looks at them like wow that was very awkward and unfunny they kind of get the hint and stop but I guess this Brandon kid had somehow convinced like two or three kids at the back of the class that he was hilarious so every time he would do something stupid they would laugh at it and he would be like see look I'm really really funny and for the most part the teacher tried to ignore it he was aware of the fact that like if he engaged with the kid at all then he was just you know gonna be like and argue with the teacher about bunch and waste a bunch of time so whenever he would have random outbursts or scream stuff the teacher would try to ignore it and I'm gonna give kudos to that guy to be honest I feel like if I was trying to teach a class or make a video and somebody was in the back screaming I'd probably be losing it pretty quick but I guess that's why I'm not an expert on dealing with students you know the whole teacher thing I don't know what school would hire me at this point ah uh, yes I've just told uh many many stories on the internet about how to cheat on tests and disrespect authority here at the school but sure I'd love to be a teacher it's just not gonna happen you know and one day the teacher came into class and just basically told everybody I'm in a bad mood I really need you guys to behave today something went on and he turns and he looks at Brandon specifically and says please 
please just behave today please and brandon looks at him and he like nods his head yes obviously but then he gets this devious smile on his face and listen dude obviously i've been a kid in school before and i understand that you know pissing off the teacher is uh something that people really like to do but i feel like if a teacher comes in and says look guys usually i'm okay with messing around usually i don't mind it i'll ignore it just for today can we please just keep it down a little bit because i'm in a bad mood like that's that's pretty fair, you know, if the teachers chill most of the time. But obviously, Brandon had other ideas. And for the first little bit of the class, everything's pretty chill. Everyone's quiet, doing their work the way the teacher asked. And uh, there really isn't any problems. But then from the back of the class, there just starts being like this sound like... <laughs> But like that often, you know, every now and then a fake fart is pretty funny. Somebody bends over, you hit them with the, it can be giggly. But if somebody's just continually fake farting for no reason, like nobody's even in front of the class, it gets pretty annoying. And the teacher looks up from his desk and just lets out a sigh and says, Brandon, can you please stop making the farting sounds with your mouth? He knew it was him. Everybody in the class knew it was him because everybody else was like, yeah, I'm just going to be quiet today because our teacher seems really pissed off and I'd rather not. 1v1 him when he's in a bad mood but as soon as the teacher was like Brandon stop making fart noises with your mouth he did what all these kids do too for some reason and just denied it being him uh, what dude uh, are you kidding me I don't know why I always get blamed dude it wasn't even me like are you kidding me bro uh, I don't know why you hate me so much you're the worst teacher oh my god dude it wasn't me and the teacher looks up and just looks at him and says so you're telling me that you weren't just making fart noises that wasn't you and he smiles and he goes, well, like, not all of them, you know? And the teacher just sighs and is like, I asked you just for one day to be quiet and behave, dude. Just one day. Like, could you really not do that for one day? And the Brandon kid uh, starts kind of, like, mouthing off back to the teacher, like, oh, one day, one day. Are you kidding me, dude? Do you have any idea how hard it is to stay quiet for 40 minutes? And the teacher at this point is in a bad mood and his patience is up, so he doesn't start roasting him right away, but he kind of hits him with the uh, yes, I do know what it's like to be quiet for 40 minutes, but trust me, everyone in this class is aware of the fact that you can't do that because you're constantly disrupting everybody. And the class kind of laughed because, like, it's a pretty good comeback, you know. Dude, do you know how hard it is to be quiet? It's like, yeah, I can do it, but you can't shut up. Trust me, everybody knows. So the class starts laughing, and when the class starts laughing, it's something that wasn't Brandon, you know. He was very, very hurt. If he's not going to be class clown, then nobody can. So he replies basically telling telling the teacher to get off his period because if he's in a bad mood, it's not the kid's fault and da 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 da. And at that point, the teacher is just like, Brandon, that's really, really not okay to say, dude. You can't just go around saying stuff like that. And of course, Brandon is like, I can say whatever I want. This is America. You do realize that I have rights in the Constitution to say what I want. And this is one of my favorite things, bro. The thing about the First Amendment that I think everybody tends to forget is like, yeah, you have the right to say whatever you want. You know, that is true. But people also have a right to reply to what you say. And when you like ask your male teacher in a bad mood, if he's on his period, he's probably going to reply. And when he tells you to knock it off once again, give you another chance to stay out of trouble and you start being like this is america i know my rights it's just pretty annoying dude so the teacher at that point is like yeah you uh definitely definitely know your rights all right and the kid is like what is that supposed to mean are you calling me stupid because the teacher had kind of said it in a little bit of a condescending way you know like oh i'm sure you do and the teacher just started saying that you know for somebody that's always mouthing off and talking about how smart he is and how much he knows he sure does have a pretty pathetic grade in this class and obviously the whole class at that point is like oh you know because he's basically calling this Brandon kid stupid and the Brandon kid replies by saying that the teacher is lonely and that's why he's in a bad mood and the teacher is like actually if you would really like to know my wife and our baby are in the ICU but I'm out of sick days so thank you and like listen bro at that point everybody in the class is kind of uh, on the teacher's side dude and you don't really know what people are going through obviously Ain't no thang but a chicken wang. And the Brandon kid immediately, instead of apologizing, which is what you should do in this situation, doubles down and says something along the lines of like, well, whatever, it's not like it's our job to care. And the teacher at that point is probably like, okay, it, gloves are off. It's now fair game to roast this kid as much as humanly possible. If I tell you that 
I'm in a bad mood because my wife and baby are in the hospital, and your response is like, I don't care, that's not my problem, then I, I feel like by all means, the gloves are able to come off, right? And you can't even blame the guy for that, dude. Here's this kid saying that you have no right to be upset when your wife is in the hospital. So the teacher starts basically unloading on the guy. Nothing too crazy, but just being like, honestly, the level of your work is that that I would expect from somebody three grade levels below you. Like, the fact that you have the nerve to sit here and talk in this class when you should be paying attention blows my mind. He started telling him that, like, you know, every time they're doing an assignment, he r r hates that he has to grade his paper because he knows how many mistakes they're going to be. He's just laying into this dude about how dumb he is in this class, right? And uh, the kid's trying to respond, but he really can't say anything back because it's true. Like, it's not like the teacher is lying, you know? He really just sucks at this class. And so he starts getting really frustrated and starts trying to throw, like, more personal insults at the teacher, calling him ugly and whatnot. Like, just really trying to go for him. And that's when the teacher delivers the death blow bro the one thing that no matter how angry somebody is if you hit them with it it's just too good so obviously he's just kind of going at the teacher hard calling him ugly saying all these horrible things and uh, the teacher is keeping it very fact-based, you know? So he looks at Brandon and he's like, Hey man, you look like you're getting pretty upset, you know? You're throwing some pretty harsh insults back. Is everything okay? And the Brandon kid is like, Well, you're calling me stupid, da 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 So obviously, I'm gonna insult you back. And keep in mind, he was getting very upset. Like, you know, he's really swinging on this teacher. And uh, the teacher's response is just, well, you know, you seem like you're getting very defensive. Is that because you're aware of the fact that you're a moron and you're embarrassed by it? And as soon as he says that, dude, the Brandon kid's face, like, immediately contorts to that position that you do when you're trying not to cry, you know? Like, when it when it's coming, you feel the tears in your eyes and you're just trying to hold it back. He's trying not to cry in front of the class because something else that is going to make this a little bit sweeter. He was the type of kid where, like, if anybody else got emotional in class or cried, he was always the first one to be like, like, wow, what a baby. So when he was about to cry, some kids in the class, not the teacher, were like, wow, are you about to cry? What a baby. And as soon as that stuff started coming out, dude, the waterworks broke. The Brandon kid starts crying, and instead of, like, staying in the class to, you know, uh, it, it just have people watch him, he just sprints out the classroom full sprint. And when he leaves, the teacher is like, I'm sorry, guys, that was probably a little bit too far. And all the students just stayed silent. They're like, eh, I'm not gonna say anything thing, bro. I'm not gonna lie. He kind of deserved it. And about 10 minutes later, dude, the Brandon kid comes, like, slinking back to class with his head between his legs, you know, all embarrassed. He refuses to look any other students in the eye after just the absolute bodying he received from this teacher. I will say, dude, I just feel like if you're that sensitive, man, if someone's gonna be able to make you cry by calling you stupid, you should probably just stay out of the realm of, like, engaging in a roast battle, bro. How are you gonna go at somebody's throat, call them ugly, say you don't care about their wife and baby in the hospital and then start crying when they say that you're a moron bro like I mean come on all things considered that's pretty tame considering what you swung first with anyways guys I think that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did I would really appreciate you taking just a quick second to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought too if you don't know what to comment just go ahead and comment the word roast down there it helps the video hit recommended and it's much appreciated if you want more content I do have a podcast called the scuffed cast you guys can find a link to that down in the description along with the link to the intro song if you feel like giving it a listen and also down in the description is a link to the merch store feel free to check it out it's pretty cool if you ask me but obviously i'm pretty biased and uh yeah on that note guys send your subscriber stories to the instagram at scrubby my twitter's at scrubby underscore 69 and on that note hopefully i'll see you guys next time with another video don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot and i'll see you guys next time i'm out peace What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and uh, if y'all are, trust me, it's about to get a little bit better because I got a story time for y'all that was sent in by a subscriber about how his teachers ended up getting in a fist fight at the assembly. Yeah, that's right. It's all fun and games till the teachers that are constantly telling you to be nice to each other start punching each other and screaming at one another. Nothing like some good old-fashioned hypocrisy to start a day. Regardless, it should be a pretty fun video be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam. You're getting in a fight and let's go. The sun's down and I'm feeling it right. So tell me, little mama, what you doing tonight? You know, I'm trying to hit it. I'm the
All right, so every now and then there's a situation where you don't like somebody you work with. I'm pretty sure everybody who's had a job has been there. It's just the reality of life is sometimes you're going to have to deal with somebody you don't really get along with, you know? And uh, I guess when I was in school, I never really thought about the idea of teachers, like, not really getting along. For the most part, they all seem to kind of have, like, the code of teachers where they're all united against the spawns of Satan they're in charge of. But uh, I guess at this kid's school, there were two English teachers that really didn't get along. Long. They both taught 11th grade English, and I guess the kids at the school had kind of like stirred up some drama between them. It all started because one of the English teachers that we're gonna call Miss, uh, Miss A really loved talking crap about Miss Canes, right? Miss A and Miss Canes didn't really get along, and Miss A was very, very, uh, open about that. You know, I'm gonna be honest, if I wasn't getting along with a teacher, if I was a teacher, I probably wouldn't be telling the kids, because I know teenagers are gonna stir the pot, but she had no problem talking crap about Miss Canes, and it was the type of crap talking that you definitely shouldn't do to a group of high school students. Like, whatever, bro. If your teacher wants to sit there and be like, my lesson plans are way more well thought out than Miss Canes. Honestly, I don't know how she draws her lesson plans. It looks like she uses an off-brand expo marker. Like, if you're throwing around teacher insults, I guess it's not that big of a deal, bro. But in class, somebody would be like, Miss Canes class is da 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 and she would be like, yeah, well, well, that's why Miss Kane's husband is leaving her. That's right, class, she's getting a divorce. Like, she would just air dirty laundry of this girl for no reason to high school students. And obviously, as a former high school student, one thing you gotta understand is there's always kids that are willing to just be really mean to teachers for some reason. I don't know if they think it makes them look cool or whatnot. But once Miss A started airing dirty laundry about Miss Kane, it wasn't long until, like, you know, it got back to her, bro. The first time she was being mean to a kid and they threw her divorce back in her face, she knew that one of the teachers had to have been talking, and from there, it wasn't hard to get sympathy from enough students for them to tell her. But you see, Miss Keynes also suffered from being, uh, ridiculously petty, bro. Like, both of these people didn't like each other. To be fair, if somebody had gone around telling a bunch of high school students that I was getting a divorce, I definitely would be petty too. But instead of, like, going to the principal and resolving this or calling out Miss A, she, in turn, just starts talking crap about Miss A to her class. So she starts saying about how you know, at least I was able to get married. Like, I'm not some floozy out there who can't get any guy to commit to her. Like, these two women are just talking back and forth to each other. Which does occasionally happen, bro. But it gets to another level of bad after that. You see, other teachers start to become involved in this little beef. It's almost like the entire school started to do what happened in Twilight, where everybody started breaking up into, like, Edward and Jacob. Instead of teachers going along and telling the students, like, now class, it's not okay to talk about teachers this way. Or, like, going to the teachers and letting them know kids were talking. Random teachers would just start jumping in on, like, the drama dude. Your government teacher would just be sitting there, like... Yeah, that is right. I did hear Miss A one time clog the toilet with the poop so big it couldn't flush. Like, basically the entire school had gotten in on the rumors that these two had started about each other. Like, it was uh, the staff talking about it, the teachers, the administration. Almost everyone and their mom basically knew about these teachers secretly hating each other. And uh, other than talking crap about each other and making everybody kind of involved in the middle of their drama, they somehow managed to uh, not throw hands. I don't know about y'all, but if if I was mad enough at somebody to go around making up rumors that they, like, poop their pants, I feel like it would be a matter of time until we've thrown hands. I've never disliked somebody that much, but, you know, somehow these people managed to hold it together. And that was until the assembly. You see, this school had an end-of-year assembly where they did, like, yearly rewards for the teacher. Each grade had to pick their favorite teacher for each subject, and, you know, that seems like a pretty fun time, to be honest. Maybe I actually would have cared a little bit more about my teachers if they would have been trying to win a contest the entire year and not just like trying to push me out the other side of the class. But as a joke for the 11th grade English department, they decided to put the two teachers that hated each other as the nominees, which meant they were going to have to like run against each other. And teachers were allowed to campaign. Usually in the past, teachers would just kind of like take it pretty easy and just be like, hey guys, I've been nominated for teacher of the year. It sure would be pretty swag if y'all voted for me. You know how teachers are doing it. Like, all right, class. 
class, remember to vote for me for the swaggiest teacher of August so I can get a roaring panther paw. Or like whatever your mascot was, bro. Mine was a bird. But you know, whatever your mascot is, the teacher's usually doing stuff like that. But these teachers, because they were going up against each other, start going ridiculously hard like campaigning to be the English teacher of the year. During all their classes, like they're spending 10 minutes at the start of class talking to their students about their strategy and why they should vote for them, bro. They're making posters. One of them, Miss Canes, ended up like buying a bunch of candy and giving it out in the hallway. So Miss A bought candy and started giving it out in the hallway. Like these teachers are obviously taking this a little bit too seriously, dude. Really going back and forth. They start launching like smear campaigns on each other like it's politics. You know the political ads where it's like, has this ever happened to you? Well, John Balsack voted for this 18 times in 1947. Like that type of stuff. Yeah, they both start talking about like how much homework the other one gives out and how the other one like made their kids watch Shakespeare while we acted out Shakespeare. Like they're really just going at it trying to one-up each other to win the teacher of the year thing. And I guess nobody realized that this was getting incredibly toxic because for some reason, even after weeks of them continually like ramping up the crap talk, they still decided to pre uh, present the teacher of the year thing with like both teachers standing next to each other. So it opens up with the freshman class because they're ninth grade, they go first. First, they get their English teacher of the year, their math teacher of the year, their science teacher of the year, all that good stuff. Sophomore year goes, here comes the junior class. They start with the math class, they're like, oh, this math teacher sure does know his numbers, and he's like, yeah, that's right, I can count to ten. Everybody does their little round of applause for the math teacher counting. They go to the English teacher, and the two teachers are standing next to each other, and you can just tell by their facial expression that they want nothing more than to take the, like, crown that they were gonna give to the queen teacher and just shove it into the esophagus of the other one. They wanted that other one coughing up rhinestones for a month and a half, bro. Nothing would make them happier than to watch them suffer. And that's when they announce the winner, and they say, Miss Kane's, dude, and they put the uh, the crown on Miss Kane's head, and as soon as they put the crown on Miss Kane's head, instead of, like, going, Oh my, this competition got a little bit out of control, but I sure am glad to win. She leans into Miss A's face and just goes, Ha! Huh? Loser! And when she does that, Miss A grabs the crown and pulls it. But when she pulls the crown, it got, like, stuck in her hair. So she's pulling her hair. So Miss Kane swings on Miss A and hits her in the face. And at that point, Miss A swings back. And in the middle of an assembly with all these people watching, the teachers start fighting, bro. They start throwing hands, pulling hair hitting each other and instead of like you know the uh, kids in the auditorium calmly going guys what you're doing is deeply out of character and misrepresentative of our school they start doing what any group of kids would start doing whenever your teachers start fighting I don't care how old I get I ever see my teachers throwing hands I'm doing what everybody's gonna do fight 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 fight. They start chanting fight, dude. They're chanting fight so loud that the dean over the microphone trying to calm everybody down is like barely audible. So while everybody's just going fight, 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 all you hear over that is like, oh, calm down everybody, please go back to your seats. And they're still fighting, bro. I think honestly what happens when adults start fighting at a school is nobody really knows what to do. Like if I'm a principal, bro, eh, breaking up two 13 year olds hitting each other in the head ain't too difficult, dude. But two fully grown women using a crown as a weapon fighting. Yeah, I'm not too sure if I'm really trying to hop in the middle of that, to be completely honest. I'd rather just sit back here where I'm perfectly safe, far back, and uh, just do my thing. They're adults. They can work it out themselves, right? They don't need me going in there and solving their problems. Regardless, everyone's screaming fight while these teachers are fighting, and finally, one of the, like, security people from the school, one of the people that just kind of goes to the classrooms, the misbehaving kids are, and, like, takes them to the office, he kind of gets between them and breaks them up, and they're just both screaming at each other, you know, but they're still somehow not mad enough to be swearing at each other. Like, they're still using that teacher language, so even though they just got in a fight in front of everybody, they're like, you are a massive disgrace. The level of disrespect that you just showed is intolerable. Like, you're just using those type of terminologies, dude. They're not even like, I'm gonna beat you. No, they're just out here using that English teacher language, which, hey, goes to show you, you read a dictionary enough, and even when I'm, even when you're mad, not I'm mad, sorry. You'll still be sounding like Shakespeare. You want to take your crap talk to the next level, get mad at somebody instead of being like, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Thou 
face shall make contact with my nearest and dearest knuckle as I hurl it through the sky like a thunderbolt of lightning towards your lips. Hey, that's a much better way of saying you're gonna punch him in the face so hard, they're gonna be shocked, dog, I promise you. So they finally get broken up and, like, escorted out of the room, and obviously the auditorium at that point is just not gonna calm down. I don't care how good of a principal you think you are, calming down people after they just witnessed English teachers throwing hands just isn't gonna happen. In fact, they're still screaming fight, even after it's been broken up. So the principal at that point, like, starts trying to calm him down, but they're still chanting fight to the point where they can't hear him, right? So he's like, whatever, I guess that's it for the assembly. So they get let out of the assembly a little bit early, and so obviously the kids start, like, pouring into the courtyard of the school, and everyone's still super excited. And everybody's excited, so a couple kids decide that, like, they're gonna fight now. You know, they just witnessed the teachers fighting, so they start fighting. But when they start fighting, it's in the middle of this giant group of people pouring out of the gym. So, there's a giant crowd around them, it takes forever to the teachers to get to the middle of that fight, and by that point, the crowd is, like, either so hyped up they don't want to leave, or they've already left. So there's just this group of kids that's like, oh, fight, 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 in the school. The principals ended up having to, like, call home that day and make a statement talking about how mob violence shortly, like, took grasp of the school for a small period of time at the assembly today, and they, like, promised to not let it happen again. And that's not the phone call you want to get from your son's school. Yeah, that's right. Today we accidentally had a mob burst into the courtyard after two English teachers tried to punch each other to death. We promise that at our school we do not push the idea of punching people in the face. Sometimes, though, accidents do happen. Like, how do you even explain that to somebody? What's even crazier, though, is I guess both the teachers, like, just decided not to really snitch on each other after the fight just because they knew they were both screwed if they did that. So somehow, I'm not too sure if this guy goes to a tiny school or what, where, like, the principal has more control, but neither one of them got fired. The only thing that they had to do was, like, go out of their way to be nice to each other and make a good friendship now, which sounds like the most third-grade way of handling things. Like, oh, yeah, you just beat the crap out of each other. You guys get along now and be best friends. I used to hate when elementary school teachers would do that. Like, if you don't get along with John, you have to. No, John's a dick. I don't, I really do not want to get along with him. Anyways, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really appreciate you taking just a quick second to go down there and press the like button and comment something down below. If you don't know what to comment down below, just go ahead and comment the word teacher fight down there. It really helps me hit recommended and I'd appreciate it. Like I said, if you're new, subscribe, turn on notifications. But if you're in the mood for more content, you just can't get enough of my voice, you can check out the other story times or my podcast, The Scutscast. I will put a link down below in the description for those of you that want to check it out. A link to the intro song can also be found down below at the link to the merch store too. If you have any crazy story stuff that gone down in your life you think might make a good video, you can send submissions to my Instagram at Scrubby. Feel free to go do that. No pressure though. And uh, yeah, on that note, hopefully y'all enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I'll see you guys all next time with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am. Today I've got a story time for you guys that's pretty cringe inducing. It's about the time one of our teachers made a diss track on us, her class, to like teach us a lesson. Only it backfired and we started making fun of her more when the entire point was to show us that we shouldn't make fun of her because she could roast us with rhymes. Yeah, it's about as cringe as it sounds. Regardless Regardless, guys, I figured you'd enjoy it, but before we get into it, be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam whatsoever. You will be haunted by the ghost of Abraham Lincoln, and every night before you go to bed, he'll go, Four score and seven years ago, your mom was still a hoe. So press the like button or that'll happen, and without further ado, let's get into it. On Discord to celebrate. <clears throat> it's, it's so good, it's not good. Nice rack in her ass Brazilian Just turned 21 but my bank's a million Swear I'm a little drunk but it's a hell of a feeling Alright guys, we've all had a teacher that's like trying really, really, really hard to be relatable and while usually it's endearing and that makes me appreciate the teacher for taking the time to even try to bother to be liked by the kids, sometimes teachers just don't realize that what they're doing to try to look cool is just making everybody hate their class. In one year, I had this English teacher and 
she was one of those teachers, dude. Like, she would do these really cool things where kids with A's could, you know, skip class on Friday and hang out with her. And she thought it would make everybody work harder, but then only teachers' pets would get good grades. You picking up what I'm putting down? Like, she had the right spirit, but everything she did was just really off the mark when it came to actually getting kids to enjoy her class. And especially after the whole Friday drama where she basically was giving good grades to all the kids who would kiss her butt in order to let them kind of get a free day on Friday, whereas everybody else still had to work. She had gotten fed up with our class and our disrespect or whatever and decided that she was going to make a diss track on us in order to get us to see her point of view. And listen, man, uh, I just feel like diss tracks in general are not a very good way to get someone to see your point of view. Like, a diss track is a good way to start some beef for sure. It's a good way to get them to dislike you more. Like, I don't know what this lady was thinking. Oh, it seems like all my students hate me. I know. I will make a song insulting all of them. So one day, dude, in the middle of class, she's like, I've been working on something since I know everybody has this weird tension in the air. And all of us are kind of like, Ugh, okay, I guess. You know what I mean? And she's like, all right, I've been working on it, and I want you all to know that after this, we can still be cool. And you know, like the way teachers do it, where they're like, yeah, that's right. I, you guys are gonna get to be my friend. I'm gonna be friends with my students, you poor little piss babies that are so pathetic. You're right, usually you would not be able to be friends with someone as cool as me, your English teacher, but in this specific case, I'll make an exception after you listen to my song where I insult all of you. And it opens up, dude, and it's like her in a sideways hat, and uh, I, I remember the lyrics pretty clearly. I'm gonna do my best impersonation, all right? I'm not saying that my teacher voice is gonna be the best, but I really will try. Hey, it's your teacher in your class is whack. You guys are breaking my back. I try to be a cool teacher. Now you listen, I'm the preacher. You guys suck. It is true. You make me yell till my face is blue. And listen, dude, I get it. I understand that being a teacher has to be very frustrating. I really do. I'm not saying that they have an easy job, and I, I can't imagine how annoying it is to be a teacher, okay? That being said, this is the worst possible thing you could do. Obviously, the entire class starts laughing at her because, like, what the hell is this, bro? You want us to listen to you, so you made a diss track. And at that point, everybody was still kind of like, look, this is embarrassing, it's funny, but it wasn't making anybody mad yet. Do you know what I mean? She hadn't started going in on individual kids, and that's when the diss track took a turn, bro. Like, look, you want to make a diss track on your class? That's totally okay. I guess it's kind of funny. It's a quirky way to be like, aha ha, see kids, I too also like things that you guys like. But, you know, when you start to just insult people in a song as a teacher, it's not okay. Yeah, we were misbehaving. We're the children. You're the teacher. You can't just insult people. So the next verse of the song is pretty brutal, dude. I'm gonna change the names a little bit, but you get it. Mariah always whines about her homework. That's why her mom and dad's marriage didn't work. If you think you're slick, don't ask Brandon because his face is greasy, no abandon. She was going in on these kids, bro. Like, she mentioned that one of their parents got divorced, she made fun of another kid's acne, and, like, I'm all for roasting, okay? But there are certain things that you just shouldn't roast on, stuff that people can't change, or stuff you know people would be sensitive about. Like, I feel like as a teacher, making a joke about a kid's divorce is never okay. But hey, nah, this teacher was out here sending it, bro. Screw Brandon and his acne, right? Like, god damn, bro. Imagine how insecure that has to make you. Just not okay, especially as a teacher. If you're gonna make fun of somebody, it's gotta be for something that they, like, choose to do or could change, you know? Making fun of somebody because they choose to wear, like, wooden clog shoes in the year 2020, that's funny. That's okay, because it's like, why are you wearing wooden shoes? They could just not. You can't be flaming this lady's, or this kid's uh, parents getting divorced. She would be a lady now. You guys get the idea. Like, imagine that. Hey, honey, we're getting divorced. I'm really sorry. It's going to be very traumatic for you, and uh, one of your teachers may eventually make a diss track on it. It's just going to be reality. I don't know what to tell you. If you suck, it's because you're in this class and you never listen. Your work ethic, yeah, it is ass. Oh, yeah. 
It is true. I hate this class. It is too. My least favorite students are the following. And then she like listed a bunch of kids, bro. It was the most awkward thing I've ever seen. I really do not know who signed off on this. And what's worse is like during all of this insulting kids and talking about how bad we are as a class, which once again, just a little far as a teacher, you shouldn't do it. There's this music video that's like decently produced, okay? You could tell they put a lot of effort in. I'm not saying that it was a good music video you can just tell when old people put a lot of effort into the computer you know it's got all these like iMovie transitions that you could tell she thought was the coolest thing ever and so everybody is just watching this getting offended obviously because their teachers insulting them with this like uh, music video in the background of her trying to act cool and the music video ends and she's like so what did you guys think and obviously the class uh, was willing to let her know what they thought and was pretty open about it because like hey if you're gonna make a diss track on me then I'm allowed to be open with my feelings about the diss track right if YouTube has taught me anything you're allowed to react to diss tracks about you KSI's made like 90 videos on it for a reason so the class is obviously not happy and a couple of the more vocal kids start like roasting her immediately asking her like who she thinks she is one lady called her MC old and that she needed to shut up which really isn't that good now okay but considering my age at the time I was like, oh yeah, that was, that was okay. So obviously the class starts flaming her and she's like, are you guys kidding me? Like, this is me trying to connect with you. And one of the girls in the class who was a little bit smarter at the time than everybody else is like, I don't know how you expected to connect with us by insulting us. Like, did you really think that any of us were going to take this well? And everybody in the class is like, yeah, like in agreement with this girl who's pointing out the obvious. Believe it or not, insulting people is not a very good way to get them like on your side, dude. I really don't know what she was thinking. There was obviously more than one person involved in the making of this music video, too. So, like, how did they all get on the same page with this? Oh, I know what'll make these kids that disrespect me feel like I respect them and connect with them, and then we can all get along. I'll make a diss track insulting them. Like, I'm not saying that we were the best students ever, okay? But at the same time, we're not the teacher, bro. We're stupid. We're the kids, and I don't feel like making a diss track was ever a very good idea. So then she starts getting defensive because somebody started making fun of like the quality of the music video. So she started saying that like she actually had her boyfriend help her and he makes music videos. And so then people started flaming her boyfriend saying that he edited on like, you know, an iMovie template and he sucked. And then she started getting defensive of her boyfriend and it's really starting to get out of control at this point. All because this lady just like wanted to make a diss track on these kids to show them that she was into the cool cool hip stuff. If you're a teacher and you're watching this, I can personally tell you that's not a good idea. That's like the equivalent of me trying to get on the same page as everybody subscribed to my channel and then making a music video where I just insult anyone who's subscribed to my channel. That's gonna have the exact opposite effect, bro. Like, how do you graduate college and become a teacher but not be able to figure that out, dude? Cause and effect is a very easy thing to understand, I feel like. So because everybody is yelling, there's a kid's yelling, the teacher is yelling, another one of the teachers in the neighboring classroom like came over to ask us to shut up and she sticks her head in and just sees all this chaos and is like what's going on and that's when our teacher realizes like that this has gotten out of control so nothing nothing and all the students start explaining that like she had made a diss track on them it was just chaos so the teacher that had made the diss track at that point just backs down and is kind of like nothing because I think she kind of realized that if the principal and other teachers got involved she was definitely going to get in trouble. Like, there really was no way that the deans were ever going to be able to approve of this lady insulting all of her students. That was just never gonna fly. And even though all of us were being rowdy and rambunctious and saying that, like, she had insulted us and whatnot, you know, we weren't the best behaved class, so no teachers were really, uh, incentivized to believe us either. It wasn't the first time that some other teachers in the hallway have had to tell us to shut up. You know what I mean? So, she kinda got away with it, bro, but for the rest of the year, the class Loki had beef with her dude nobody really would listen to what she wanted it did not do what she wanted it to do the idea that it was gonna make us feel bonded to her because she was super hip and cool and knew what a diss track was yeah the, the exact opposite effect stick to Pinterest okay it's just really not that complicated something about teachers trying way too hard to relate just oh yeah it just hurts anyways guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did please be sure to press the like button let me know in the comments section 
section down below what you thought. Subscribe, turn on those notifications. I know I got you guys with a double upload, bro, because the 12 Days of Scrubs is videos I've already made. I figured I still had to keep up the new content as well. Always on the grind for you guys. If you want more content, I do have a podcast called The Scuffed Cast. Link will be down below along with the link to the intro song. And if you're in the mood for merch, do not forget the Karen Christmas sweater. Link also down below. But yeah, on that note, guys, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I'll see you guys all next time with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and if you are be sure to press the like button otherwise no joke no scam the crazy emo kid is gonna try to fight you next time you're in class. Yeah that's not worth it so uh, I would press the like button. Real talk though guys today I have a story time about one time when I was in PE and uh, this emo kid ended up fighting the PE teacher because he said that he would rather do that than exercise. Even though that doesn't make a lot of sense because I feel like fighting Fighting the teacher is still more exercise than running the lap would be. Regardless, he did end up fighting the PE teacher and it was just an absolutely insane situation. So uh, I figured I'd turn it into a story time. So without further ado, let's get into it. <coughs> it's, it's so good, it's not good. Nice rack in her ass Brazilian Just turned 21 but my bank's a million Swear I'm a little drunk but it's a hell of a fan Alright guys so as I'm sure a lot of you know For some reason when I was in high school That must have been like during the main phase Where being emo was really cool I don't know if it was just because Twilight was still relatively popular And everybody wanted to be a vampire And get bitten by Edward Cullen or whatever Or uh I don't know just that Where I lived was weird but for some reason There was a massive amount of emo kids In my school and and uh, there was one particular kid in my emo class who was not only emo, but a rare breed of emo where he was insanely lazy. And I'm not saying that when I think of emo kids, like the ability to be super active and loving PE is the first thing that pops into my mind. But certainly when like I think of an emo kid, I don't think of the type of person who would unironically cry whenever he was asked to run the lap in PE. And that is the level of lazy that this one emo kid was. Like, seriously, dude, one time our PE coach got mad at us and said we were gonna have to run laps for a week because we had just been, you know, not listening to him or whatever, and this kid unironically just bursted into tears at the thought of having to work out and, like, told this whole sob story about how his feet really hurt after he runs, so therefore he shouldn't be able or forced to work out and whatnot, and listen, dude, I, I get it, a lot of people hate PE, but we were at the point in high school where if you were taking PE, you elected to choose it so this kid was crying about having to run the lap but also was dumb enough to sign up for another year of PE so I don't really know what his issue was and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today he's the kid who ended up trying to fight the PE teacher and for the purpose of this story I'm going to give him a name it's not going to be his real name obviously so I'm going to name him uh, O'Malley. So O'Malley was an emo kid of Irish descent, and what made him really funny about him trying to be emo, aside from the fact that he was lazy, was the fact that, you know, he was, he was a ginger, which there's nothing wrong with being a ginger. I have a lot of friends that are ginger, but emo kids trying to be ginger is really funny, because no matter how many black clothes you wear or how often you paint your fingernails black, you're always going to have red hair. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, our PE teacher was one of those type of guys who thought that tough love was like a great way to get through to kids, and I mean, sure, for some people it definitely works, but he was also the type of guy wearing like really high short shorts blowing the whistle in our ear at 6am and screaming at us that we were lazy, and uh, that being said, he especially did not like this O'Malley kid because, as I've said earlier, he would like cry about running laps or just constantly complain, and whenever he would complain, the coach would just roll his eyes and yell at everybody to keep going or like, you know, whenever he was making sure that people were getting whatever he thought we were supposed to be doing done, he would go over to O'Malley and like check on him specifically. They just did not get along. They really did not get along, which look, if I was a PE teacher and I had some kid who was literally bursting into tears about running a lap around the basketball courts, I, I would probably be pretty annoyed too because uh, believe it or not, you can run a lap around the basketball courts without crying. So they were just overall did not 
not get along from the very beginning, and they would butt heads and argue all the time. And, uh, you know, as it usually is when you're in school, the teacher would usually win the argument by making this kid run more laps, and then he would cry, and it was just a vicious cycle. So that being said, uh, outside of the class, they definitely, definitely did not like each other, and they barely tolerated each other as it is. So whenever we would be outside of class, this O'Malley kid was the type of kid who loved to talk trash about how tough he was and how awesome he is. So outside of class, he would tell basically everybody that would listen about how, like, one day he was just going to snap and fight our PE teacher. And, you know, the RPE teacher was so lucky that he had promised his girlfriend he was going to stop fighting or he would have knocked him out and, and stuff like that, which... Listen, man, I don't think it's actually that dope to be able to say you're going to, like, knock out a teacher because, A, yeah, we, we probably should be able to if you're a teenager. You're, like, in the prime of your life, right? But that being said, you definitely, definitely was not going to knock out our PE teacher because our PE teacher was, uh, for lack of a better word, built like a mountain, dude. He was 680, could probably eat with the giraffes off the top branch of, of, the, of every eucalyptus tree, and on top of that, he could bench all of Australia like this dude was huge so whenever he would go out there spouting about how one day he was gonna fight him and whatnot everybody would just kind of roll their eyes and be like yeah yeah because our PE teacher was just a mammoth of a man and it was very unlikely that if he ever tried to fight him he would get any further than like two sounds being heard the sound of him picking the fight and the sound of him hitting the floor as the teacher like threw him to Narnia Anyways, this O'Malley kid is just keeping talking trash over and over again, and eventually it gets back to our PE teacher, and we didn't really knew that it had gotten back to our PE teacher because he never really acted mad about it, but then uh, one day, which is the meat of the story, we knew for sure he had heard about it because we go into a class, and I look at the whiteboard, and I see that we're doing, like, a wrestling unit, which, honestly, I'm, I'm gonna rant about that for a second. That is the by far the worst part of PE, dude. PE is already weird enough when you're a teenager, right? have to change in the locker room and be around all these guys that care way too much about flag football and now you want me to wrestle kids that I literally have just witnessed eating deodorant in the locker room for a grade like that that's just the worst but regardless that's really not important to the story we all get out into like the the gym area where all the mats are set up and we're just kind of standing there as our coach is kind of explaining like how it works and you know the rules and whatnot because believe it or not you really have to slow down and explain to teenage boys how to wrestle otherwise you're gonna turn around and they're all gonna be like RKOing each other and the school's gonna have 50,000 lawsuits on their hands so he's just making sure that we know how to do it safely and whatnot and we're not trying to hurt each other blah 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 and finally he gets towards the end of it and he looks at the O'Malley kid and he says hey do you want to demonstrate and wrestle with me considering you're running around school telling everybody how you could destroy me in a fight and obviously when he says that the entire crowd of people in PE just go like oh because when a teacher calls out a kid for talking crap about being able to fight him, you know, that's what kids do. I'm not saying we were mature, but yeah, it's pretty funny to watch your teacher call out some emo kid and being like, I hear you've been talking crap. Do you actually want to throw down? But what catches us all by surprise is the O'Malley kid is like, yeah, let's go. And at this point, now we're all very interested, because I'm going to be honest, uh, this O'Malley kid was was just tiny. Like, there's nothing wrong with being small, dude. You just kind of have to be aware of it. So when a literal mountain challenges you to wrestle, it's probably not a good idea. But sure enough, the O'Malley kid is, like, you know, getting all hyped up. There was a couple of other emo kids in our class that just weren't or weren't as outspoken, and they're kind of, like, hyping it up, telling him he's got this and whatnot. And everybody else is just hyped to watch. So our coach and this O'Malley kid, like, get into the starting position for wrestling and uh they start wrestling and sure enough the O'Malley kid gets pinned in like under two seconds right and everybody's like laughing at him and whatnot and uh obviously he feels embarrassed and it wasn't like anybody was laughing at him to make him feel bad but yeah when you've been hearing this kid talking crap about how he's gonna be able to like body slam your teacher if he ever starts anything and you know he's so lucky he's not gonna fight him and then they get to wrestle and he gets pinned in like two seconds it's just very ironic you know what what I'm saying. I also think that's why uh, something I've noticed is the more that people talk about how much that they need to be held back and the other person's so lucky that they're not able to fight, like, 
The, the less they can actually fight, dude. I mean, honestly, if you can't fight, if you can't wrestle, I don't understand the need to go around the school pretending like you were going to beat up the man who is literally built like a dwarf from Lord of the Rings and can probably body slam you into Mordor. So he gets pinned and everybody starts laughing at him. Then he gets pissed and he starts screaming that it's not funny. It's not funny. And our coach probably does the wrong move here and he goes I don't know from where I'm sitting I think this is hilarious because keep in mind he has him pinned and that sets the kid off and he starts like screaming you know the rage where it's like Rah! and like trying to get out from under the teacher but obviously the teacher is just a lot bigger than the kid so he's just kind of sitting there and he's telling the kid like hey calm down calm down because he can tell the kid's just getting irrational and the kid now is just like screaming insults at the teacher and everybody who's standing they're watching their face goes from like enjoyment and laughing to like oh this is very awkward so finally the teacher gets off the kid and is like okay calm down but when he gets off the kid instead of uh him calming down he turns around and just starts like scratching the teacher and I, I don't mean hitting him I mean literally like scratching the teacher so the teacher is like oh my god you're scratching me and starts like you know trying to get away and this kid dude is fighting like a Tasmanian devil oh my goodness like, you, you ever heard of the guy who just, you know, takes all his clothes off in the fight and just starts biting people? Like, that that's low-key what this kid's strategy was, dude. He was just attacking this teacher with his claws out and everything. It was absolutely mind-boggling to watch. And then it happens, dude. The teacher, I guess, had, like, finally had enough. So as the emo kid is just kind of flailing around, like, rah, rah, like an angry little rabbit trying his best to just, you know, n not be cringe. I, I don't really know what his plan was, but it was not very well thought out, obviously. So at that point, our massive teacher, who I've told you multiple times look like a mountain, does the obvious thing. And he grabs this kid by the arms, lifts him up into the air like it's like a, a pillow, dude. I've never seen anyone get picked up that easy and slams him onto the mat and just yells are you done and when he yells that dude the kid who uh, like literally 30 seconds ago was like an angry jackrabbit bro it was like a scared little baby he just bursts into tears and he's like i'm sorry let me up let me up and the teacher's like no i'm not gonna let you up and the kid is crying and he's like let me up so after a minute of holding him down our teacher goes to let him up the second time right and he lets him up and the kid just goes right back to attacking him, bro. Like, he had been laying on the floor, pinned by the teacher for a minute, and he's like, all right, I've calmed down. Can you please let me up now? Like, I'm sorry. And our teacher finally lets him up, dude, and he just turns around and starts, like, kicking the teacher and going at him again, dude. So our teacher, this time, like, puts him in a headlock instead of just pinning him, and is looking around. He's like, somebody go get the dean. Somebody go get the dean. But the problem is, all of us are just, like, so entertained by this that nobody was leaving. I, I think it's, I've heard of this in psychology before it's like the spectator phenomenon when, when a crowd of people is watching something bad like everybody assumes that somebody's called 911 but nobody's actually called 911 type of thing so he's yelling at us to go get him help from the office but all of us are standing around like idiots uh like oh wow this is crazy i'm sure somebody else went to the office so nobody's gone to the office so after like five minutes of this kid still just freaking out on the teacher trying to get out of his headlock like somebody had gone to the office so the dean's come in and they break everything up and they're like oh my god what's going on and the teacher dude is like I don't even know we were wrestling and then he lost and and you know like he just started going berserk and obviously the dean was like didn't believe it so they break down they start pulling each of us out and like questioning us separately to figure out what happened but sure enough yeah all of us kind of explain that like they were doing a demonstration for wrestling and the kid just freaked out and started you know scratching the teacher and all that stuff and and uh, obviously the deans, once they got through like five of us and realized that all of us were telling the exact same story and uh, it looked like the kid had been the instigator, they actually believed us, which is a first. Usually, you know, the deans just do whatever they please and then like, you know, pretend that they listen to you. But nah, they actually ended up listening. The kid got removed from the PE class. I actually never really saw him again. My, my school was pretty like big though, student wise. So I don't know. Maybe I just never saw him again. Maybe that was his decision to not be emo anymore, dude. I, I hope O'Malley figured it out because I'm going to be honest. It was not a good look to see him crying on the ground and then trying to trick the principal into letting, or not the principal, the, the teacher out of letting him out of the headlock so he could fight him again, dude.
I do have to give him credit for follow through, dude. I feel like the first time I got pinned by the teacher, I probably would have given up. But the fact that he came back and the weirdest part is not only was he fighting the teacher, but he was fighting dirty, dude. As I said, he was scratching. He was biting him. He was like spitting at him. It was insane. It was literally like watching a Tasmanian devil, you know, or, or what I could only assume. I've never seen a real Tasmanian devil. I've only seen the dude from the Looney Tunes blah, 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 looking guy. But uh, yeah, something like that is genuinely what it was. I'm gonna be honest, though. I've seen a couple people fight the teacher it never works out though because you're always gonna get in more trouble like let's be honest here who do you think the principal is gonna side with even if the teacher is in the wrong and you have every reason to fight him bro like the, the principal is not siding with you you are definitely taking the l on that one because uh they're just gonna believe the teacher there's really nothing that you can do about it Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video, all that good stuff. If you've made it this far into the video and you enjoyed it, go ahead and comment the word teacher down below. It just lets me know that you guys made it this far, and it helps the video do better and recommend it, and uh, I, I would really appreciate that. Other than that, be sure to get yourself some of the OG Sub Club or the Ha Ha merch. They're both pretty fire if you do ask me, and with the Christmas quickly approaching... It's definitely worth it because, uh, I don't know, swag or whatever, whatever, dude. I'm, I'm not going to Jake Paul you guys and pretend that my merch is going to make you the coolest kid in school, but I can promise you that Princess Leia will definitely visit you in your dreams if you get it, you know. How do I know that? I'm subconsciously planting it in your mind now. Anyways, if you're new, subscribe, turn on notifications. I post videos like this every single day. And other than that, that's going to do it for the video. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and uh, today as y'all can tell from the title I've got a crazy story time about a time a teacher broke this kid's nose. It's uh, definitely entertaining, something that I figured y'all would enjoy, so uh, let's make a video about it. But before we get into it, be sure to press the like button, otherwise no joke, no scam whatsoever. Your teacher's gonna break your nose, and if you're out of school, well then your teacher from second grade's gonna find you and break your nose. So, you know, press the like button, and without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so as I said, this is a story time from my time in elementary school where uh, a teacher ended up breaking up this kid's nose. Not breaking up, broke the kid's nose. Completely different. It was definitely interesting, though, and it's one of those things that sticks with me because it's not every day you see a teacher just whoop just destroy a kid's nose. I'm pretty sure that every elementary school had a game that was, like, all the rage for them. Like, that every kid would play at recess, it was, like, a big deal, you know, if you were good at it, you were one of the popular kids, and some schools had tag, but at my elementary school for this year, it was kickball. I'm talking most kids would be chilling out there playing, trying to play, or, like, watching kickball. It was just the thing that people did at our elementary school for some reason. And because of that, because people were always trying to play, it was a big deal if you were picked first in kickball. And kids are mean, so there was a group of kids that always got picked last. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily nice because it's elementary school and kids are just kind of mean to each other. And the teachers, after seeing this for a while, decided to intervene and, like, do something about the fact that there was a group of kids getting picked last, you know, and they were going to do a game where they were team captains and they were going to pick all the kids who get picked last first. And I'm not going to make fun of that. It's probably a good thing to, like, not make elementary schoolers feel horrible about being bad at kick kickball. So, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. And one of the teachers that is going to be team captain of one of these teams is named Mr. Jones. And Mr. Jones was a really popular teacher at our school, dude. Like, all the kids loved him. Everybody thought that he was the coolest teacher. He knew a lot about Star Wars. He was, like, very outgoing and energetic. So when everybody found out that he was going to be a captain of one of the teams, obviously everybody was hyped. And the other captain was another popular teacher, but it, it doesn't really matter to the story. The only person you got to know is Mr. Jones. And, uh, you know, anyways, the game gets going, and the teachers are picking the kids, and of course, they pick all the kids that don't get picked usually, they pick them first, and they're really excited, everybody's excited, you know, they kind of get their point across about how it's kind of mean to make fun of people for being picked last in kickball, guys. And, like, we had the Sesame Street Elementary School moment where we're like, oh, okay, you know, like, I, in their mind, that's what happened. But whatever, we all kind of get the idea of, of what's going on, how we had kind of been mean and the teachers were going to pick them first. 
So whatever, the teams get picked, and the way the kicking order was set up was that the teachers were going to kick last. And usually because the teams that were playing were like the most athletic kids in the school, I guess, the innings would take a little bit. So if you were last in the kicking order, you probably weren't going to get a chance to kick at kickball that day. So the teachers were going last, and they're like, all right, this will be good. We won't actually have to play. All the kids will get to play and we won't actually have to do anything. Well, obviously, because they had picked all the kids who, you know, usually didn't play or got picked last first, they weren't necessarily great at kickball. I'll just be honest, they sucked. You know, no offense to them, this was a long time ago, but there was a reason they were not getting picked for kickball. You know, it wasn't because we just thought they smelt bad, it was because they couldn't kick a ball. So naturally, the line goes pretty quick. Like, instead of it taking a while to get through kickers, they just kind of end up blowing through them to the point where the teachers have to go pretty quick. And so it's probably about the third inning, halfway through lunch, and it's up to Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jones is about to kick. And all the kids are extremely hyped up. As I said, it was normal for, like, kids to watch the kickball game. And now that a popular teacher was playing and people were going to be like, you know, on the line to see their teachers play, everybody's paying attention. And obviously when it's his turn to kick, everyone wants to see what he's capable of. At the time, it's a very big deal how good you are at kickball, all right? Do we think a teacher's cool that can't even play kickball right? That simply cannot be. No, no, no. So we have to judge his skill and ridicule him if he's not good enough at kickball. So all the kids are sitting there, and they're staring, and I'm sure Mr. Jones felt the pressure, because he kind of pointed to the outfield as if he was going to kick the ball really far, right? And everybody's kind of like, oh my gosh, he's going to kick it so far, this is going to be so awesome! And everyone was already excited. And so he points, and he looks to the pitcher, and he gives him a thumbs up. And the person who was pitching the ball or just rolling it towards the kicker was this kid, Marshall. And Marshall was a really nice kid, you know, he was great at Pokemon, not necessarily athletic, but he gets the thumbs up from Mr. Jones, and he looks like he's having the time of his life, dude. As if pitching in this kickball game was the only thing he needed to cross off his list to just live the happiest existence possible. His smile is huge. And so, you know, everybody's like, all right, here we go. And they break apart, and Marshall goes, and he starts to roll the ball. And it's slowly going towards Mr. Jones. And finally, it gets there, and he goes to kick it. Anyways, Mr. Jones kicks this ball, dude, and it just, <laughs> it just goes flying, man. You just hear it, like the wrath of Jesus himself, just boom, and the ball just goes flying. And instead of going up like a kickball does, it just kind of does a line drive with just enough air where it's slowly rising. We're like a plane taking off type of motion, right? And it's flying right into Marshall's face. And it is a kickball, so you know, it's not crazy hard, but it's still enough where you hear it hit his face, and you hear a crunch, and then you hear the noise of like a ball hitting someone's head, a kickball, like the boing, but it's like crunch boing, you know, as the ball bounces away. And he immediately starts screaming and just grabs his nose, right? And all of the kids that are watching this, we literally just freeze. We don't know what to do. We don't know whether to be like, uh, yeah, or like, uh, no, if we're supposed to do anything, nobody knows what just happened. He's yelling, and Mr. Jones runs up to him. And when he runs up to him, he tries to cover him so that way, like, we can't see him. He doesn't do a very good job, and we see that there's, like, blood coming from Marshall's hands. And so somebody screams, oh my god, he's bleeding! And because we're in elementary school and we're, you know, young, everybody just starts freaking out that he's bleeding. Oh my gosh, oh what? Oh no, ah, a teacher made someone bleed, he broke his nose. Someone starts screaming, Mr. Jones killed Marshall, Mr. Jones killed Marshall. Another kid is standing there while kids are running around him and he's just like, the world's ending, the world is ending. Obviously, we're being way too dramatic. It's not that big of a deal, but we're all just running around freaking out. And at that point in all the chaos, I'm sure Marshall is freaking out more and maybe he had realized that like his nose is broken. Because Mr. Jones kind of scoops Marshall up and starts to run him into the school, right? And so he's running with Marshall. And I don't know which one of us thought this first or thought this was a good idea. But someone in this, like, mob of very worked up elementary school kids goes, He's taking him! Chase him! And so Mr. Jones is running, like, around the portables we had into this entrance so he can get him to the nurse's office probably just away from here. 
And so he's running and he's faster than us because he's an adult with adult legs. But like we all start chasing him. And when I say all of us, it's probably a horde of eh, 70 to 100 kids. I can't give you an exact number, but enough that when Mr. Jones looks back, I remember just seeing the fear in his eyes as he realizes there's a literal horde of zombies chasing him down. Like 100 people sprinting after him thinking that he just killed some kid with a kickball. And of course he's not dead. Like, you know, obviously now as an adult, I can be like, this is insane. I don't know why we did this. But in the moment, elementary school us was so passionately chasing him down because of something happened in kickball. I, I like literally don't know how we got so wrapped up in it. It's the definition of mob mentality, you know. So finally, Mr. Jones gets through the door before we get him with Marshall. They go to the nurse's office. A bunch of other teachers meet us in the hallway, like push us back out there. And, you know, they, they settle us down. None of us really got in trouble just because so many people had done it and it was like such a rare situation that they didn't really know what to do. They told us, obviously, you don't ever like chase somebody when they're going to the nurse's office. Just really obvious stuff. But they didn't really know what to do. As for Marshall, he ended up coming back to school two days later with a broken nose. You know, he had broken his nose as soon as the ball had smashed into his face. Mr. Jones didn't get in trouble because it was genuinely an accident. He was a good teacher, and I guess once they explained to uh, Marshall's parents what had gone on, they didn't, like, want him to get fired or anything. But for the rest of the year, I remember he was, like, so much less outgoing. He just felt so bad about it. Anytime he saw Marshall, he would, like, buy him a snack from the little store we had in the lunchroom. He genuinely felt horrible about it, but I will just never forget the anger that our little uh, horde of elementary school students felt when we were chasing him down to be like, you hurt our friend! And we didn't even know him that well. Like, I knew Marshall a, a little bit, but it wasn't like he was my best friend or anything. I was just kind of wrapped up in the moment. It is what it is. Regardless, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought. And of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on those notifications. If you really want to help me out, you can check out a link to the intro song in the description down below, along with the link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast. Or you could use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout. Those are all great ways to help out the channel and help me out. And last but certainly not least, if you take a look at your calendar, it's October, which means Halloween's approaching, and you can get yourself the Halloween merch that's on your screen now. Pretty fantastic, pretty cool from the description below. It's the top link there, so go check it out and get yourself some. But uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that's going to do it. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace.